Students, students, quiet down now, quiet down. It's time to begin our history lesson today. That's so boring. History is so lame. Why can't we learn about something else? Thank you for your input, Kyle. Remarkably thoughtful as usual. Despite Kyle's bland take on our existence, today we'll be diving into the unique and wonderful history of feudal Japan. What better way to do that than to speak about the life of an influential individual? Japan? What can you possibly teach us about Japan, Professor? Well, for starters, feudal Japan was a complicated and very different place from your mom's basement, Kyle. Additionally, there was once a mysterious man, one of legend, known as Yusuke. Yusuke was an outsider, and speculations of his origins range far and wide. But what we do know is that Yusuke likely was the first black samurai. Yusuke was a man of mystery, for we don't know the exact date he was born, nor do we know what his original birthplace was. We don't even know how he came to be in Japan. What's particularly fascinating about Yasuke is this. He came to Japan, and his background is a mystery. And after he served his role as a samurai, he faded into the depths of historical account. From mystery he came, and to mystery he went. Prepare yourselves. Let's talk about Yasuke. Welcome to the History Out of the Box podcast. My name is Cam, and with me I have my beautiful, my intelligent, my Star Wars loving co-host. Oh, thank you. That's me, Jen, by the way. Yes, he's saying that because of this beautiful mug that I think has come with us across many different apartments and houses. This was from you when you were in college, isn't that it? That mug has been with my family for centuries. It, it is, is a, a family heirloom. It is a Return of the Jedi Star Wars mug. Yeah. That is so gratefully helping me drink my coffee this morning. Yeah. Well, on that weird, shameful plug about Star Wars, uh, welcome to our channel. Welcome to our show. Uh, as I said, I'm Cam. Co-host is Jen. And we are History of the Box. We are the only podcast, as far as I can tell, and as far as I have researched, uh, I've done a ton of research, um, we are the only history podcast that connects our listeners with the ghost of their collective past. And really the only history podcast that ever exists. I know you've never heard of a podcast that does anything on history. I know. Like history pod, like history like the History Channel, like they don't have podcasts. Um, but yeah, if you happen to like content, you can find our content on Instagram at History Out of the Box. Uh, you can also find it on Spotify, Anchor Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Apple Podcasts all the major listening platforms, and YouTube, on YouTube at History Out of the Box. Uh, normally, we upload. Uh, we up, normally upload once a week. We have been incredibly busy. Oh, I know, unbelievably busy. It's been a lot. But we're back with an excellent episode for you. Yes, an exciting one. I was I was pretty excited about this one, and um, I know I think I believe it was you who suggested this this subject. Maybe you we, know what we had them on the list for a while, and we wanted to get to him. And we had some others that we were working on, and finally, finally, yeah. we're here to talk about diving into the history of what's at least known as in history. Japan's first black samurai. Yes, Very okay. nice. Very nice. Yes, okay. Actually, you might recognize the name because uh, Netflix has an anime titled Yusuke, which is about this person who existed a long time ago. It is, of course, taken many liberties because it is it an has. anime. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're into anime, check that out. I saw an incredible. Uh, Real sent from my brother, uh, shout out my brother, um, about a, a SpongeBob anime that uh, I would totally watch. A SpongeBob anime. Oh. I would totally watch it, but it's not real. It's one of those like really Someone well spent done. a lot of really, like a lot of time and yeah. effort on a beautiful made reel that unfortunately yeah. is done in like 60 seconds and then you scroll to the next. But if you know, had. If copyright wasn't so out of control, uh, it would have been a wonderful, wonderful series. I haven't actually watched Yasuke the anime, but for what I saw, it's pretty popular and people seem to like it. Um, actually, it's kind of a bummer. Um, there was a movie. I think it is still in the process, but originally Chadwick Boseman, who tragically passed away in 2020, mm. was slated to play him. Um, and obviously when that happened, the movie kind of, you know. Go to Michael B. Jordan. He's phenomenal. Well, he'd be great. He'd be great. He would be great. Yeah. Huh. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, all the modern day depictions of Yusuke, they they tend to take some liberties. Of course, there's actually not too much 
a hundred percent confirmed information about Yasuke. Um, so I really tried to bulk this up with some of the information surrounding his life. Like we're going to talk a little bit about this period of time in Japan. Mm. Um, what exactly was expected of the samurai at this point, but it was just a, a really interesting. I swear that you were the one who suggested that we we. I might have been. I, I mean, honestly, at this point in my life, I feel like I'm I'm starting to, with all the things going on, I feel like my memory is starting to resemble that of one of the most famous uh, figures in our country right now. So I have no idea. Maybe I have. There's Maybe a lot of people that you could you could insert. I here. know that's enough. Right? So I'm just going to keep it vague. Just. So we've talked about Jack Parsons. We've talked about oh. L. Ron Hubbard. We've talked about some interesting individuals, Aleister Crowley, Catherine the Great. We've talked about all of these individuals. And by the way, this one, as far as I can tell, is the first one who is a actual, well, I mean, George Washington was a soldier, but this is like a warrior. Well, Alexander the Great. And then Good we have point. all those people yeah, who were in the military, right. including yeah. L. Ron Hubbard. It was in yeah, the military. we talked about <laughs> Vlad the Impaler. You're right. Let's yeah. just start this out. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek before we dive right in. Yasuke was a badass. Mm. Okay. But it, his life is poorly documented, unfortunately. So there is a lot of, um, when you actually would like Google him, there's a lot of filler and a lot of, we'll get into some of that. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot of stuff taking place around him. And then you can draw your assumptions. This is, I don't know if you've done this. So this is just a general question, um, rhetorical maybe for our, our listeners and viewers, but also for, for you. Was the lack of documentation because it was such a long time ago? Or was it because at that time there was a lot of inner fighting among certain... I mean, you could probably say a little bit of both. Plus, um, unfortunately, we do know he existed. Like, mm. he definitely existed. And I know here in the notes I gave you a photo. Um, it's it's a drawing we'll from that. 1605 that, that right is likely depicting Yasuke. That's not 100% confirmed, but it is a it is being depicted a black man as a sumo wrestler. Mm. And, um, you know, that's not 100% confirmed, but this photograph, or not photograph, this drawing is usually attributed to him, not drawing it himself, but um, a an image, a depiction yeah. of him. So we do know he existed, Unfortunately, his life was poorly documented, so some of it you have to speculate a little bit on what exactly the details surrounding his life, but it is a very interesting story, so I was really excited to talk about this one. And before we start out, I do want to say I have practiced these names. There's a lot of Japanese names here, and I am very much... Uh, uh, someone who wants to respect the names, so I, I really look, am trying my best. Look, look. We've made it abundantly clear in the Sakagawa episode. You and I were taught in our early 2000s educational system. That's true. We only can say and pronounce things so much more betterer. Okay. Um, with that being said, I'm sure people will forgive you if you mispronounce some things. And I, I'm truly if, trying my best. And if they don't, who cares? Who cares? Okay. okay. Uh, what I can say, what I absolutely can say is um, one of these days, two things. Personal note, when you and I visit Japan, we need to go and see some sumo wrestlers. I feel like that is my calling in some ways. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, uh, I personally think that we should actually look more into people who don't have a lot of documentation around their histories. Um, yeah, it was it was very interesting because a lot of it was sort of legend and hearsay. And I mean, I guess history is kind of... A little bit of that all the time. A lot of it is legend and hearsay, believe it or not. It seems like he had a very interesting life, and there's a lot of stuff we don't know. Mm. But um, let's jump into it. Yeah, let's get right into it. So Yasuke's early life was uh, likely in Africa. Shocker! Oh, surprise. Um, he was born in the late 16th century, likely somewhere in the 1550s, and his birth name is actually unknown. He was, you know, Yasuke is a Japanese name. Uh, he was born maybe in a couple different areas of Africa. Africa is huge, and it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where he was born. There's been some historical data pointing this way and that way. Um, could have been in the Kingdom of Congo, which was a pre-colonial uh, kingdom in West Central Africa, modern-day Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, some speculate that he may have been born in Nigeria, South Sudan, even Ethiopia. And there is... A, 
pretty substantial direction. There was a priest in 1627 who referred to Yusuke as being born in Mozambique, which would coincide with other African people in Japan at the time actually being from that country. Mm. There seemed to be, I don't know if a trade route would be, but there was That's just... a long way to go. Oh, yeah. That was a very long way to go. Yeah. I mean, from almost every every single one of those countries, modern day countries that you mentioned, all the way to Japan is quite a ways. 1550s, right? Yeah. Like this is a long time ago. Mm. Bottom line, he was almost certainly born somewhere in Africa. Um, generally, it's assumed Mozambique. Mm. Now, the details are a bit unclear here. There are varying accounts of why and how he actually ended up in Japan. He may have been taken there as a free man who became a servant on a mission to spread Christianity. Mm. He may have left Africa as a mercenary. He may have been brought to Japan as a slave. But it doesn't seem like the situ situation... A lot of Americans, when they think of slavery, they automatically jump to the transatlantic slave trade mm -hmm. when when um, black men and women and children from Africa were taken to the Americas, uh, particularly when Europe was starting to colonize. And that situation seems unlikely. Yusuke, if that's the case, would have been taken captive in battle or sold as a slave by a third party. And Thomas Lockley, who's a historian who did a lot of um, studying on Yusuke and his life, who he co he co-authored a book about him, and it describes him as eventually meeting an Italian Jesuit missionary by the name of Alessandro Valignano, and this is a huge character in Yusuke's known life. Uh, Yusuke began serving as a likely a quasi bodyguard mm. for Valignano, and Aless Alessandro, I guess, is the better way to pronounce his name. <laughs> I'll just call him Alessandro, this Jesuit missionary. Allie. He would travel through India. So we're not sure if Yasuke was taken from Africa to India first, and that's where he met Alessandro, or if Alessandro met him in Africa and then started traveling with him. But they eventually did meet up. Mm. And uh, according to Lockley, Thomas Lockley, this author, this made more sense because missionaries actually weren't allowed to travel with weapons. And Yasuke was sort of this muscle that Alessandro could travel with, you know, bodyguard. Mm -hmm. So that is likely the situation of how Yasuke ended up in Japan. Well, I think there's a very interesting, at least observationally, and I could be completely wrong about this because after all, I am an ignorant American. Um, we tend to uh, associate almost all, at least from my perspective, all of like African history pr primarily with like the slave trade, and when in reality they were very advanced, incredibly advanced, and plenty of them left their continent, their countries, their respective kingdoms to go to other places. Mm -hmm. So it would, I mean, interesting, very yeah. interesting that he found himself in Japan. Uh, I mm -hmm. really wish we'd, we'd known, like, in great detail kind of how he got there, because that's... That's like, a, it's just a very, it's a very interesting series of events. It seems as though he was serving either as a bodyguard or just, you know, I don't know, servant. From what I saw, it was likely that he wasn't a slave for the Jesuit missionaries. He was uh, working for this Alessandro Valignano, mm. who was a missionary, and he served as a bodyguard as he traveled through and we, Asia. I think we also have to clarify that our, our understanding and designation of, of slavery over the years in America specifically is very different than what many would understand as like adventured servitude or someone. I mean, because jo jobs back then, you didn't fill out paperwork. <laughs> like, yeah. You didn't have a 401k. Like, you kind of like. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. we can assume <laughs> Yasuke did not have um, some stocks and bonds waiting for him when he was ready to retire. What are your health benefits? <laughs> like, like they, yeah. didn't, they didn't have a lot of that. So we've uh, evolved. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Evolved. Maybe. Maybe. Yes. He was traveling with. Uh, this Italian Alessandro Alessandro Valigna that makes me want to play Assassin's Creed 3 2 2 2 2 oh, gosh that, there's too many you know what's unfortunate is I'm getting to the like point like in my life where I've gotten so old this that I remember sick Assassin's it really Creed would game. be a cool Assassin's Creed game Ooh. Um, sh Ubisoft will take that I think they make Assassin's Creed pay us um, well, it's I, like likely already. They it, already it they're already is. working on it. It they're probably like, is. Shut up, you yeah. Two. Um, I think my my biggest thing is like I, I've gotten so old now where I can like remember technologically like the iterations of different games and they just all get conflated. Like I, I was thinking the other day, like I, I was thinking about a game I was playing the other day. Like, wait a second. I was like on the high seas and I was going from island to island. Was that 
Black Flag or was that Assassin's Creed Odyssey? And then I came to the conclusion there was actually Assassin's Creed Odyssey and I had like no, totally, both. well, yeah, but I had kind of like, I had like memory hold my entire experience with Odyssey for some reason uh, in favor of the, uh, what was the one where you, you were actually in Egypt? Origins. Origins. Yeah. I just memory hold Odyssey for some reason. So yeah. anyway, uh, nerd nerding aside. Uh, so mm. Yusuke. Yeah. <laughs> Yusuke in 1579 arrived in Japan mm. and he came with, uh, came to the Jesuit mission in Kyoto and the Jesuit mission, I should mention, was part of a larger effort of the Society of Jesus, which is the Catholic religious order, to spread Christianity and establish presence in Asia. Again, this would be such a good Assassin's Creed game. I, I think it would it honestly... Might be. I'm honestly wondering he, if they've already know, looked at this. Here's the, the real part. Well, I know there's stuff in the future. I think there was Assassin's Creed X that they were talking about that had something to do with Japan. So it might be this. Um, but I, I, I... And I could be wrong on that. So don't quote me on that. Um I guess my biggest thing is I, I think that it would just be a generally good story to tell anyway. Um, mm. That's just my feelings on it. Yeah. No, I think I think so, too. But the Jesuits were active in many countries in Asia and the region, including Japan. And they established this mission around the same time that Yusuke was taken there. The missions were established at a time of great political and social change in Japan as the country was undergoing a period of unification under yeah. the daimyos, uh, which were... That's the Japanese word for the feudal lords. And I'll get into sort of what their purpose was, but they were trying to consolidate all that power. That's likely why. And create there was, a centralized state and, you yeah. know, religious order. History gets lost. Seizes opportunity whenever they see it. Yeah. So, and history also yeah. gets lost when people get killed. So the yeah. very violent time in Japan there. Yeah. The Jesuits of Kyoto, they were mm. known for their strong learning and cultural adaptation. It actually allowed them to gain the attention of a lot of the Japanese nobility and they would win converts from the upper classes like at ease almost because of this. They also established schools, hospitals, other institutions that would help spread the influence of the Jesuits and their religion. Plus the Jesuit mission in Kyoto played a significant role in the cultural and religious exchange between Japan and the West and its impact can still be seen in Japan today. So that was sort of the overarching situation mm. in Kyoto and Japan at the time. Now Yasuke's presence in Japan was unusual and highly notable while he was probably not the only black man to set foot in Japan. You know, I saw some things online about that, but from most accounts, no, I mean, it was unusual, sure, but it wasn't, you know, the, be really, the, the first. It would be really hard to trace that back. I mean, there, yeah. I have to imagine there was just for even though Japan, at least as far as I can tell, was very closed off, much like what China was for a long time, too. Uh, I have to imagine that people have made their way there. over. Well, if you think about centuries. it, Japan's on the edge of the Pacific Ocean and, you know, you have all the, um, you know, the Pacific Islanders and stuff. They spent a lot of time until, you know, a bunch of colonizers showed up. By the way, the next episode is going to be really fun. I'm really excited about that one. We are going into the Pacific. We're talking about colonizers. But I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> That's next episode. I'm just giving you a sneak peek. But uh, his his presence, Yasuke's in in Japan was was unusual. But uh, Portuguese Europeans they had they had visited Japan at this point, and they actually did have African slaves. So it, it, they've been at least at that at that very basic level, like mm. a black man or a black person was unusual, wasn't the yeah, the craziest thing. Yeah. Um, the people there were still largely unfamiliar with the people of Africa. And at the mission, Yasuke gained attention of Jesuit missionaries and Japanese nobility pretty quickly because while they had probably heard of people that had a different skin color than them, it still was, you know, people be peopling, of course. The whole rubbernecking thing that everyone yeah. does with everything <laughs> all the time, which, by the way, now somehow has made itself into a controversy within local it's gyms. It's just so interesting, you know. We've been lucky enough to live in a melting pot for our entire lives. You don't you don't consider that 
as a thing. But then you got to consider like it is it is a thing. I mean, when you and I were places. over in England, we had English people come up to English people come up to us when we were eating fish and chips and specifically look at me who was dressed very much like an American and ask <laughs> me, are you from America? And I said, <laughs> yeah, yes, bro. dude, from Southern California, What's bro? Up, bro, it's me, Southern California, and I'm here to spread the good word of Californian burritos and poverty like that's well, yeah my best the best part really quickly before we continue that story is you were wearing a nasa hat i was wearing a nasa hat look you know what you know what's funny about all this and this is something that i don't think younger people know until they get older because i didn't know you sometimes we just wear some of the dumbest stuff oh, like no. i i have gone through i am like a chameleon when it comes to my you've clothing had, you've changes. Had some trend changes well now it's just yeah. all no, it's just all now you just wear like, black. Yeah, it's all black, grays, and blues um, with like very little logoing outside. Well, this isn't even really a logo. I mean, I guess it is. It's kind of not. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I had some terrible fashion choices. Like, terrible. We all do. That's part of growing up. You can look back at your photos and be like, oh. You know what's funny, too, on that trip? I went and bought like a leather jacket. It probably wasn't really a leather jacket. Probably wasn't oh, yeah, no. real. I mean, it, it's held up. You still have it, don't you? No, your dad has it. Yeah, oh. yeah. Hmm. I think he has it. Well, yeah. anyway, getting back to Yasuke. Yeah. After our brief stint in London, right there in the in the <laughs> history books of our own uh, lives, Camden Market. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, so Yasuke, he was gaining the attention specifically because he was, you know, black and. The, there's a 17th century book that's titled The Chronicle of Lord Nobunaga. Oh, oh my gosh. I practiced this name. Nobunaga. Nobunaga. Excuse me. You need me. to watch more animes. The Chronicle of Lord Nobunaga. 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 Thank you. I'm, I apologize. Shame, shame. I shame. practiced that name so many times and I, of course, fumbled the ball it's fine. right away. It's fine. But, uh, this this book described Yasuke as appearing to be 26, 27 years old, robust, of good demeanor. And some other accounts actually describe him as at least being 6'2". So he was very, very tall. He would be towering over the yes. average Japanese person. He was a era. fellow, a fellow tall man like me. Yes. yes. That's what you guys I would be about the same height. cannot wait to go to Japan to not fit on anything or in anything. It'll be a good time. Well, he would tower over the average Japanese person of that era. But what's the average? I don't know what the average Japanese height is today. But I know, I know America is 5'9". 5'9", right? For yeah. a man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, it, it, he was, that, he was yeah, a very tall, likely very well built um, man of a... Of, of, a different skin color. He stood out is basically the bottom line here. And he was a source of fascination. This part's fun. He was a source of fascination and intrigue with the Japanese, some of whom who maybe have actually, they've heard about it, but they've never encountered a, a person of African descent before. And regardless of this, upon seeing Yasuke, according to the author, Tom Slockley, they initially believed that Yasuke was covered in black paint oh, okay. and right. he right. was ordered to be washed. Obviously, his skin color remained the same and uh, they were fascinated by this. You know, now that's from, you know, I, I, it's it's one of those things where you're like, honestly, honestly, he, here's the thing. Here's who, way, but, way to pause. Yeah. pause it. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm not going to let my 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 ignorant Americanism involve myself. This was 1600s. I understand. Okay, so yes. so so yes, you're right. They, they they did not have the internet back then, and <laughs> uniform culture was kind of normative. Like it was very. No, I know it's just one of those things where uh, you you I understand looking back and being like you gotta you gotta take a little bit of perspective here. It's just still one of those like ugh, also things. I mean, if he's in good demeanor he's going to understand that people are ridiculous i mean this is the this is I mean, another thing so. that well this is another thing that i think kind of gets me about some of this stuff is like people were not stupid back then like they no. like and, and and humor and comedy existed in different forms back then and i'm sure people who were like for example even if you were really big like the strong men in nordic countries who were just mm -hmm. massive towering mm -hmm. over people they were used to people staring at them and they mm -hmm. kind of just ignored it yeah no, like you right. can't fight, you can't pick battles with everybody over everything. It's also, not you have to imagine um, perspective shift, you know, growing up somewhere in like Mozambique, for example. Mm -hmm. And then when he finally did go and leave Africa and go he to India. He was probably just as amused. Japan, yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Speculation. But despite the prejudice and the discrimination, he 
face. Yusuke was presented with a welcome party. Can we ask a serious question? Like a serious question. Yeah. If I go to an African country mm-hmm. looking like I look and people are intrigued by how I look, is that really prejudice and discrimination? No, I mean, it, I guess it depends on the person and their perspective. I really think, I think it just depends on how you consider it. I mean, I don't want to speak for other people people i mean i've personally not felt that way when i've visited other places where i'm you know maybe one of the few white people walking I guess, around well, I guess but the question, that doesn't i guess the question i asked that's just a different perspective entirely it doesn't really correlate well the, the reason i ask that is because there's this knee-jerk reaction for people that that they tend to cl- conflate like genuine curiosity or like not knowing something with like prejudice I also, yeah, like, well I, I think part of part of it is our perspective from 2023 and just in our personal lives and our family and where specifically where we grew up where this was just not something that we personally had to deal with. It's just a different, it's just a different mindset for us. So I don't want to speak too much on it. It was just I, I, I give, I give these people a pass. Okay. It's all right. Yesuke, They're all dead. Yesuke, so it doesn't matter. He's rolling over in his grave right now saying he's going to haunt you with his. You know. Honestly, I kind of want him to haunt me. <laughs> He's going to come cool. after you. You're going to cool. wake up with this six foot two samurai standing over you saying, what did you say? That would be say? really freaking badass. What did you say on that podcast? That would be really cool. Anyway, back to Yusuke. And Regardless of all the, the nonsense just people he People are through. people. They're just people. So Yusuke was presented with a welcome party. He quickly won the trust and the respect of Oda. No- you say this? Oda Nobunaga. Oda no- Nobunaga. Nobu. Nobu? Naga. Naga. Oda, Uda. Jeez <laughs> you, you're throwing me off. Oh my goodness gracious. Oda Nobunaga. He's there a powerful go. daimyo. Yes, he was yep. a very powerful daimyo, feudal, feudal lord who was trying to unify Japan. And Yasuke was quickly and officially taken into the service of Nobunaga as a, a trusted retainer. And Yasuke was not only the first black samurai, he was now the first foreign born warrior. And uh, that's, kinda, that's pretty kinda notable. Cool. It's yeah. kind of cool. It's kind of cool. And who who is this Nobunaga guy that I keep mentioning? And I'm like Just. trying. I, I will. I will. Tr- I he's, do not want to pronounce He's going to haunt you. I'm going to wake up with he Yasuke is. standing over me he's, like, welcome, brother. We're friends. And you're going to wake <laughs> up with Nobunaga shaking his head at you <laughs> because know. you can't pronounce his name. Who is he? And what does a daimyo do? Okay feudal lord what the heck is this whole thing about now these daimyos they ruled over what was called a fiefdom or a han fiefdom fiefdom. see we try i swear i have like an actual like like uh, something up here where i mean what i used to call barracks (laughs) barracks i used to call them barracks (laughs) like barack obama (laughs) like a barrack like a military barrack and no one corrected me until my dear husband one day looked at me and said, what did you say? Yeah, Barracks. That was a weird He's like, day. Barracks? <laughs> so Just no. okay. Anyway, fiefdom. Fiefdom. Yep. Which was known as a Han. If you have any questions, you can ask me. I'm okay. here 100% of the time. I know. You love anime. So you like, you, you've yes. been, you've been listening. But uh, these were leaders in the local samurai warrior class that held significant political and military power. They owned or they owed loyalty to the shogun who was the military governor of Japan. And they held overall authority over all of the other feudal lords in the country. Uh, or the, the shogun did, excuse me. He held power. They held yeah, power yes. over all the daimyos. In exactly. The yes. Thank you. Now the military power us, and the maintaining of these large armies of samurai warriors, it took a lot. Daimyos also had very lavish lifestyles. They, uh, had extensive castle complexes, oh, extensive gardens, oh, believe palaces. Me. I've played Ghost of Tsushima. I know. <laughs> and they had um, fine art, antiquities. They were just, you know. The bros were loaded. Yeah, loaded. And Oda Nobunaga. <laughs> Oda Nobunaga. Nobunaga. He took Yasuke into his service, and this was a huge deal. A huge yeah. deal. He was strong and he was a competent military leader. And over the course of several decades, he had expended his power in his territory through a series of su- successful military campaigns, alliances, political maneuvering. He was known for his innovative what? political maneuvering, fancy terms oh, yes. for hmm. political maneuvering. Yeah, well, 
that always has its pros and cons yeah. i assume oh my gosh but my competitor Nobunaga, died <laughs> he was known for his innovative tactics his willingness to use new technologies firearms to gain the upper hand and i think that does correlate with the fact that he was willing to bring in this foreign black man into his ranks i think just foreign man is the the most important thing there because i, I think so too because yeah. here's because here's the thing it's 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 not normative back then, like I said earlier, for cultures to be unbelievably diverse across the board. I'm not saying that there wasn't interactions. I mean, in the sense that there was definitely a heavy sense of tribalism back then that is not, that was not or is not very similar to today because of globalization. So sure. when it comes to something like that, from my perspective, I see that as like, dude, like Yasuke not only was he probably very intimidating, large and a badass, but he also probably did some stuff for Nobunaga that we don't know about that gained some immense trust immediately. Oh, yeah, I would think so. I mean, not to mention Nobunaga, he was known for very progressive and secular policies. He was kind of set apart from his contemporaries because of that. Which is very that. different, yes. Yeah, and he encouraged cultural exchange between Japan and the West. Mm -hmm. uh, he welcomed foreign mer merchants, pretty easily missionaries, intellectuals. Mm -hmm into his territory and, and invited them there to speak and, and share. Uh, he also abolished many of the traditional and social political structures that had long hindered the development of centralized centralizing Japan, such as um, local warrior nobility, the powerful Buddhist temples. But during Japan's Sengoku. Sengoku period, Nobunaga was known for being the great unifier. That's what he was. He was called obviously in Japanese, but. English translation. But Yasuke soon rose to a position of trust, as you said, likely through some things that we may not know, we can only speculate, but he became a samurai and he was the first known black person to hold that title in Japan. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just think it's very interesting that, it, again, this kind of goes back to our, our, our interpretation of history in a lot of ways uh, as Americans. It's just, it, it, there's a lot more complexity than what I think people really tend to understand mm -hmm. and something like what nobunaga was doing at that time in a lot of ways was seen as incredibly incredibly um forward thinking right because it because the reality is the, the cultural integration of a lot of things and the, yes this is coming from me a cisgendered white man um the <laughs> cultural integration for a lot of things and i don't use that term seriously um it, there's benefit there mm -hmm. and and pretending as if there needs to be some sort of um, reallocation of something that various cultures have brought to the table doesn't make any sense because over time we're going to have to adopt those things anyway. Yeah. Uh, history, humanity progresses. We all, you know, we all use the wheel and I don't know who made that. So it's true. It's probably some like, it's like a little old lady in the probably, cave somewhere yeah. who like just made the wheel rolled it out history forgot her and then she died and then yep. rolled into a like an encampment of some other caveman they're like wow yeah. and, and, and the, it's from the gods and here, here's the thing is like i think that the, the best way to do things going forward at least in my opinion is just to like be happy with the innovations and things that we have and be reverent for the people that created those things but also use those things to your to your benefit and other people's mm -hmm. benefit mm -hmm. like stop like hoard, hoarding as a kid doesn't make sense so it shouldn't make sense as an adult you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like no. no one, no one likes the kid like at the table. That's like, oh, these. Uh, the teacher gave us all these really thin paper, thin slice triangles of pizza, and I'm gonna take all of them. No one likes that kid, so don't be that kid. You know what a hilarious. <laughs> Every, there's like, always one. There's that. always one. Or like the the one kid that like invites all the kids to like the birthday party, and then you have to do exactly what they say. No one likes that kid, so don't be that kid. Don't be that kid. So you should probably take a commercial break. We should. I want pizza and I want to play Ghost of Tsushima now. Perfect. And we're back. I just had a full pizza. Uh, just kidding. We sat here awkwardly for about 10 seconds. So <laughs> there's a gap. Um, this happens every time. There's a weird, awkward 10 you second got me gap. Got food for pizza, though. I'll where we're ta you. we talk and then we take commercial break. Commercial break. Mm. And then we sit here for 10 seconds while the audio runs. So there's a gap in post production. So I can see it and just split and cut it easily. Behind you know the, the you know the secrets now. Yeah. You know the secrets. So. Yusuke is an absolute badass. Mm -hmm. Oda Nobunaga is a very progressive and influential leader. Where does that leave us? Well, what's it even like being a samurai between the 1570s and 
the 1580s. Well, if I learned anything from The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. That's true. Which, by the way, underrated movie. That is a really good movie. Great Hong I haven't watched that movie in a long time. Soundtrack. I remember really liking it. Um, as much as it was Tom Cruise LARPing as a samurai, which is kind of hilarious because he's small-ish um, in, in Scientology. Uh, but with that being said, I, I, I yeah. I want to watch that movie now. Now I want to watch the Ghost of, the well, Ghost it was, of Samurai. It was, <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima it, and The Last Samurai. You're, missing, you're mi- mixing up all of your favorite, you All know, my favorite stuff. All your favorite uh, media. If I were a simp for anything, I'd be a simp for Japan. You're welcome. Yeah, and we haven't even been. I haven't even been. We need to go. We've been I talking about that really, for years. I really, really want to try Pufferfish. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to have that, that experience and maybe die. And that's kind of like the... Good. The, here lies Cam. Lovely. He died because he had that's, puffer fish. That, that, yeah, that sounds great for it's me. Kind of bad, it's kind of badass. Oh my it's gosh. It's kind of cool. You ate puffer fish? No, I danced with the devil of my own volition. Isn't it lionfish? Mm-mm, it's puffer. Puffer fish. Okay. You can also eat lion. Well, I don't believe you can eat lionfish. They probably can, but puffer right, fish I have no idea. The unique experience of being a samurai at this this day and eight, not today. <laughs> Back in 1570 then. and 1580s. Um, not even considering that he was, you know, a black man serving as a samurai. Uh, they were known for their military skills, strict code of honor. If you've played the ghost of Shishima, then you would know. Uh, they had an adherence to the principles of Bushido, which was a moral and ethical code that governed the behavior of the samurai. And as warriors, the samurai were expected to be ready to always defend their lords and their territories. They were trained in the use of weapons and tactics from a very young age, typically. Um, so Yasuke got a, a late start. They usually were training when they were very young. Many of them live in castle towns or military garrisons. They would spend much of their time training, preparing for battle, performing other duties related to the status of warriors. But in addition to military duties, these samurai would often have a range of social, economic, cultural responsibilities as well to their regions. They were expected to maintain a high standard of personal conduct. They were to uphold the values of the of Bushido in their everyday lives. So as uh, like your employer would say, don't go on Snapchat and and be an idiot because we will find you. Oh, it was much more. It, it was get rid of you. I mean, speaking from perspective, <laughs> it was a much more serious thing than that. And that's yeah, oh, why yeah. that's why I think despite any, you know, observable appearance differences, him, Yusu, him being Yusuke, he is him um, being integrated into basically a, a, a social status mm-hmm. as he was just isn't wasn't normal it had to be um there had to be something done or said besides the fact that he just looked different there had to be something done yeah i, I absolutely like my guess is he probably uh either performed some feat or did some things that were unsavory like like not like like violently um for oda Mm. Uh, like helped him in some way that gained his trust because it's just not you don't just promote someone into like samurai class was a very difficult distinguished and distinguished class to be a part of it, they also played a it's major, like navy seals yeah yeah they also played a major role in the administration of their lord's territories so they would hold important political and administration uh, administrative positions as well and despite many demands that were placed upon the samurai being a member of their class did have its privileges Mm -hmm. they were among the highest status individuals in japanese society they enjoyed a range of benefits and privileges including a high level of personal and financial security Big deal. They would have access to education and training that a lot of people didn't have access to, which is, again, an even bigger deal. You're right. And then they had a certain degree of prestige and respect in their communities. So overall, being a samurai in Japan at this time was challenging, but extremely rewarding Um, and obviously jeopardizing, considering they were expected to, at the drop of a hat, fight with everything they had to protect their territories and their lords. But it offered a lot of opportunity and responsibility. So, Yasuke was brought into that fairly quickly. And it's 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 a pretty huge deal. Um, there's a lot of artist depictions of Yasuke online that are, like, really cool, you know? Like, think about it. If you're an artist and you want to draw, like, this badass samurai, there's so many really, really cool um, artist renditions of him. But... 
When Yusuke entered Nobunaga's samurai ranks, it wasn't just any old club, because Nobunaga employed thousands of samurai, but Yusuke belonged to a tight circle of about 30 or 50 warriors. Yeah, so he did something. He had to have. According to Thomas Lockley, that's the case. Or um, Thomas Lockley made it all up. Or he he could have made it all up. I don't know, but he's, you know, he's a historian and author, and I'm going to just take, I'm going to take, he, he did more studying on this than I did, so. His name's Thomas Lockley, I have to believe him. <laughs> But this very small entourage also may have included some of, this is interesting, some of Nobunaga's lovers. Um, and sometimes older warriors would actually mentor younger warriors and develop sexual relationships with them. That wasn't always the case, but I did see a couple things mention that. There's no evidence that Yasuke was romantically or sexually involved. With- was there evidence that Nobunaga did that? From what I saw, yeah, some people said that that, that sometimes happened, mm. but it wasn't like, it's like entirely unusual or even like, I guess romantic isn't even a good way to describe it. like the it. Spartans. Yeah, I mean, it Bonding. was just a cultural, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hey, you want to play uh, volleyball in the beach with oiled chests? That's and again, shirts off? that's not a, like, like take that with a grain of Can salt. Kenny Loggins playing in the background. Uh, oh, wait, yeah. you know. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I mean that's that romantic. Yeah, that's that's about as that's the same. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> anyway. Tom Cruise. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Bam. Mm. You know. But yeah, so so you know, I don't know how true that is, but yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no evidence yeah. that Yasuke like was. That's why he was there, or anything like that. No. Um, but unfortunately, his life as a samurai was, from what we can see, pretty short lived. As a lot were. Yeah, as yeah. a lot were. Uh, some would say a short life, but a great life. But um, it's not even about his life. It's more about being a samurai for yeah. Nobunaga. Because despite many successes that were throughout Nobunaga's life, his life was cut short in 1582 when he was killed in a coup that was led by one of his own vassals. And a vassal was a person, a vassal, fine, was a person who held land and other resources for the daimyo in exchange for military or other services. Essentially, they held their lands as grants. Yeah, it's like what they did in Europe with yeah, the Russia, Russia with Russia, Catherine. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they owed loyalty, military service, other forms of support to their lords. In exchange for that, they would maintain order, collect taxes, provide troops. We're not bah, that. Bah, bah, oh, we're bah, all bah. Not, we're the same. We're not that we're all different. We're yeah. all. We all do very similar so, things. One of these guys uh, led a coup, okay? This was a key moment in Japanese history, actually. It marked the end of Nobunaga's reign and his the beginning of a new period of political instability mm. and conflict in the area. The leader of the coup, okay, I'm going to say this name. I'm going to say it. Akitsi Mishueti. I'm just going to say Mishueti from now on. I, I'm that's pretty fine. sure it's that's fine. the yeah, exact way to pronounce fine. it. Okay, Mishueti was the leader of this coup and was reportedly motivated by a desire to seize power, eliminate his lord, whom he felt was becoming too powerful and dangerous. But the complete truth is really a huge mystery mm. in Japanese history as to why he decided to rebel against Nobunaga. They feel like maybe he might have been slighted in some way. Maybe. It's one of those things where we don't have like written account by him as to why he was did this. Yasuke the side bay that interfered with Akichi's relationship with Nobunaga. Was that what it is? That's that's the fan fiction. There version. was a triangle yeah. of love, much like in Twilight, that was overbearing and boring, and one of them got mad and decided to murder the other. Oh boy. Well, on June twenty first, fifteen eighty two, the leader of the coup, Mishuedi, he uh, launched a surprise attack on Nobunaga's headquarters in Kyoto, in their temple. And Mishuedi had a, approximately 13,000 troops, and Nobunaga was caught off guard at a tea ceremony with maybe about 30. Ooh, yikes. And in the ensuing battle, Nobunaga was surrounded and killed, as you can imagine. Or, well, I'll get into what might have occurred, uh, along with many of his loyal followers. And in some telling of the popular lore of this whole situation, Nobunaga completed the war, warlord ritual act of seppuku, which if you don't know what that is, is wi- you take a really long it, pointy thing. You take a pointy thing and you poke yourself in the abdomen and you pull either left or right. And uh, yeah. what follows is use your imagination. So it's said that he did complete this ritual act 
Um, and he asked Yasuke to decapitate him and return his head to his son. Nice. This would have had Yasuke serving as what is called a kashakunin, kashakunin, which basically is a person who beheads the individual dying of seppuku. Which, it's like by completing the, way, is the act, considered a very respectful thing. Right, right, right. It was like a like almost. An, it was an honor, basically, um, because the whole point of seppuku from my understanding of it was it was a ritual honorable way to die when you've lost battle um oftentimes other like opposing warlords would allow yeah. would allow that to occur um not doing it themselves because it gave them a sense of respect dignity. And, and dignity and reverence and like you lost but now you can you can go lose out your, own your, yeah, your own way in your own terms right terms, yeah. I'm simplifying it, but yeah. So the coup was swift. It was a decisive victory for Mishu- Mishuedi, uh, who briefly took control of the capital, declared himself the new ruler of Japan. And this was extremely short-lived <laughs> as another one of Nobunaga's vassals. His name was Toyotomi Hideyoshi. 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 So there's Mishuedi and Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi revolted against Mishuedi a few days later on July 2nd and defeated him in battle. And Hideyoshi in turn went on to become one of Japan's most powerful daimyos, uh, one of the main architects of the country's eventual political and military unification. So there was this, well. there was this um, very, very quick, quick progression into that. Um, unfortunately, it resulted in Nobunaga being uh, unalived. Killed. Yeah. Yeah. Unalived. unalived. And, um, yeah, so it it was a crazy time, as you can see. That was that was June twenty first to July second, so it was a very very quick quick mm. um, change. Nevertheless, Nobunaga's legacy lived on through the work of his successors, who continued the efforts to unify and modernize Japan as it um, had begun already when he was in power. And Nobunaga is remembered as one of the most influential figures in Japanese history, and his name is synonymous with the military powerless, political savvy, cultural openness that characterizes Japan in the late 16th century. Yasuke, however... He disappeared from historical record after this. Hmm. And the question, of course, is what happened to him? Like, he had to have been with that 30, that group of 30. Well, it remains unclear exactly, but there are varying accounts of what happened to him after his Lord's death. And much of what is known about his life comes from fragmentary, often contradictory sources. So really, we can only speculate from this point. And I can share some of the things that I read that that some historian historians say and things that were said maybe a hundred years later in a writing. And it's like, we don't know for sure. We yeah. don't know for sure what happened to Yusuke. But according to some sources, Yusuke was taken into the custody of Mish- Mishuedi's warriors or even one of the other vassals warriors who may have suspected him of being involved in his Lord's death. Mm. Um, some suggest that he may have been released escaped fled the country at some point maybe he maybe it's one of those things where it's like when we're talking about sakagawea and a lot of her a lot, a lot of, of her life i mean obviously historical record says that her husband's wife died at a certain mm-hmm. point but it's not her actual name so we don't know we don't know and then a lot of the natives i'm going back but a lot of the natives say she lived out a long life back you can in, watch that episode back in here. her native or well her her family's native lands yeah so there's that speculation, but we just don't know for sure. So maybe that happened with Isuke. Maybe he somehow fled Japan and went back to Africa. Who knows? Occam's razor would suggest no. Um, but if we're to believe that Yasuke decapitated Nebunaga after the seppuku and took his head to complete the ritual, it was likely done to hide the head from Mishuedi so he didn't display it on a spike, which was not... Not uncommon. It was a sign of, a of, of I defeated this person. Yeah. So there, so it could have been just. There was a lot of uh, uh, cake pops. Yeah. Well, I mean, you all saw Game of Thrones, right? What happened to Geoffrey? Yeah, yeah, Joffrey. yeah. yeah it or no, did that happen to Joffrey? Not Joffrey. Joffrey did it to um, um, Star- uh, Ned Stark. Boromir. Boromir. <laughs> hard day. Hard time. Man. Game hard of day. Hard, hard day for Ned. <laughs> Monday. Difficult day. Uh, in any case, there are 
few reliable records of Yusuke's life after Nobunaga's death. His ultimate fate remains a complete mystery. Some historians believe that he may have returned to his home country, while others do suggest that he may have remained in Japan and lived out the rest of his life there. Um, it's tragic that there is no documented history in Yasuke's old voice, his own voice, which is part of the thing. Like we don't have anything he's ever written. We don't. There's no diary lying around. Even if it is, it's in someone's basement. And they don't know what they have. Yeah, it's like, like in Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's somehow, <laughs> it somehow ended up in Ohio. Somehow in Ohio. That's part of the issue here. Is a lot of people think of how many people have faded from history just because you know we don't billions. Yeah, billions okay. of people. Yeah. All the people that are dead that we don't remember. Well, think know? of what we lost when the Library of Alexandria was burnt. Yeah, think of I'm think of what we lost in World War II. Okay. I mean, so, like, like it's 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 unfortunate. Without any concrete information, we we have to take Yasuke's story and let it capture the imagination of the people now mm. and after, which it has. Like I said, there's a Netflix show. There's obviously something in the works with a movie, and you there's hear this about episode, this. you know. There's this podcast yes, episode, uh, but but you think about it. Just from what we shared, like there, like if you're someone who wants to turn this into a screenplay, there's so much room for flourish. Yeah. A lot of people are drawn to this unique and fascinating, you know, place in history yeah. where a black samurai was, you know, really really unique in that situation, and it seems that he played a huge part in a huge transition of Japanese society in the late uh, 16th century. But his life was marked with adventure, danger, cultural exchange. Um, his legacy continues to captivate people around the world today. I just wish we knew c- concrete evidence of what happened to him. Why? Maybe he lived a long, He's beautiful life. He's like Saint life, Nick. And he had like a, a like children. Who knows? Like Look, Saint Nick. not everyone has the ability like us to document our existence. <laughs> Yeah, he, he the, unfortunately, uh, we can't go look at his highlights on Instagram. Yeah, we can't. We don't know what yeah. happened to him. And eventually, when Last of Us happens, all of this will be moot anyway, and everyone will go back to the point of just either being a zombie or living out their life in complete and total obscurity until eventually the cycle continues again. And if you think I'm being facetious, maybe, maybe just, I am, maybe I'm not. Just one of those things where, I mean, zombie know, apocalypse. I wish I, would, I wish I knew, and I never would. And the zombie, will you. zombie apocalypse could happen. None of us will yeah. ever know. We'll just have to all die one day not knowing the answer. So, <laughs> I mean, it's still a, <laughs> pretty, note, a pretty cool story. Uh, but yeah, that's a uh, that's uh, I liked that one. On a scale of uh, one to ten, I'm gonna give Yasuke. Uh, I'm gonna give Yasuke the highest score ever. Really? Nine point three. That's shocking. Who else did you like? <sighs> I like the original Chad. Obviously, I have a George Washington. George Washington was pretty great. Um. Don't like Alexander the Great. Vlad the Impaler was, he was kind of one-dimensional, a lot of impaling. Catherine the Great was good. I liked her. She was... Complicated. Complicated, but I gave her like, I think I gave her like a six or seven. I liked Ernest Shackleton and Sakagoya. Those are my two Shackleton favorites. Shackleton was good. See, we're just giving you promo. You Parsons go back was and good listen. too. I liked Parsons. That Parsons was good. Parsons, but here, I'm conflicted with Parsons because Parsons is kind of like... Again, complicated. Pregnant All lady, people, pregnant lady jumping through a ring of fire. I mean, come on, man. You know, there's a lot of complicated people like just, in just, history. Like, dude, just if you want to do the Satanist acts, just like stick, with, just do it on paper. Do like use just a spreadsheet. Get a Ouija board. You back. had Jack. You had a nitroglycerin station on your front porch. Like you, you, you were too extreme. Like just, just can bring it back. Bring it back just a little bit. Like your, your quote unquote eccentrism. Your eccentrism. Bring it, pull it back. Like I. This is America. You lived in America. You do what you want for the most part, as long as you're not harming other people. But you're, you're running two individuals, if you believe in a certain narrative. Two individuals through a ring of fire for a ceremony. Yeah. You couldn't have done that with, like, a, a stuntman? You were in Hollywood. Well, I mean, go back and listen to the, our stuff. most recent episode, Jack Parsons. It's yeah, one. but that, 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 I, I like this one. This one was good. I like uh, Yasuke. And here's the thing: is it, it, and maybe it's because uh, I don't know enough about him to really determine whether he was an ethical individual or not. That like maybe could be it. Um, but yeah, this was this was cool. I also happen to have an affinity for Jap- Japan, just generally. Yeah, well, like I really like Japan. I thought this one was interesting. I've been really excited to do this one for a while, so I'm finally I'm glad we got to finally. Um, Talk about Yasuke. Yeah. I'm really excited about their next one because I know it's been one of the ones I've been talking about well, for a we'll long leave that, time. We'll leave that as a surprise. We so. are talking about 
Jeffrey Dahmer. No, we're not. No, we're not. Um, <laughs> no, we don't need to do that. No, we will stay away entirely away from all that because it's overplayed. It's overdone. I don't need to talk about Mr. Uh, I put people's heads in fridges. So, um, yeah. But yeah, that was a really good episode. I like that one. Uh, and if you like that one, you can find all of our content at history out of the box at on instagram uh and you can also find us on youtube again i did not ask for a subscription and honestly you it's up to you you can give us one if you want uh if you don't that's okay too with that being I said demand it. well let's not get a little too grabby but with that saying. with that being said why well we like to talk about people in history that aren't really given a um uh maybe a complex perspective of who they a are a fair shake a fair shake and there tends to be a lot of um just condensing as is i mean needed. we condense too but we condense but at the same time like i feel like there's a lot of humanity that's left out when it comes to a lot of these people just because mm-hmm. it's 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 difficult to humanize every single person in history because there's a lot of people in history mm-hmm. and their brains just aren't that big enough mm-hmm. yet just wait until we integrate with just, the cloud just sleep um, well knowing that everyone in history has been an idiot yeah it, every <laughs> single person you, all of us including us I. Yeah. Including the people you love. Look at us goobers. <laughs> We're talking to you from a screen. You don't even know us. We're talking about history. Um, But yeah, uh, if you happen to like the content, you can go ahead and give us a subscription. It'll be right there. Uh, and normally we have episodes every week. And if we don't, we are still around. Do not worry. Um, This is a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on. But yeah, oh, yeah. thanks for tuning in. And we will see you next week. <laughs>